Hi, welcome to the eCam channel. This is John. Today we will introduce open circuit potential. While this concept is relatively basic, during experiments I still get curious about the measured open circuit potential values, especially when the electrodes contain more than one component. In this video, we will describe a few scenarios where open circuit potential was used, the theoretical background, and the experimental setup. OCP measurement is very simple and can be done with even multimeter yet it can provide some powerful information. In lead-acid batteries, people have used open circuit potential measured at 25 degrees Celsius after 24 hours of resting to estimate the state of charge. An example is shown in the table on the right. This relationship can be tricky as it depends on the manufacturer and the agent condition. Also, 25 degrees Celsius environment is not always accessible. But if the measurement is done under proper conditions, this simple measurement can give good estimates of the state of charge. In corrosion science, OCP is useful in monitoring corrosion reactions. For example, the right figure shows the process of a 304LL stainless steel, where the oxide film formed in air experiences reductive dissolution and then is replaced by a new oxide film formed inside the solution. In the classic textbook example, the Nernst equation can use OCP values to determine the concentration of redox species in the solution. In my own experience, I frequently use OCP to evaluate the status of the electrochemical systems before any formal electrochemical characterization. If one has worked with an electrochemical system, one can have a rough idea of the OCP value of the system. Suppose the OCP value of an identical system is unstable or far off. In that case, there will usually be a connection problem like mistakenly selecting a wrong channel, using malfunctioning electrodes, clipping wrong electrodes, having one or more electrodes not touching the electrolytes, and others. Of course, my experience is very limited. If you use OCP in your experiments, please share your experience by leaving a comment below. In OCP measurement, no current is supplied. Only the open circuit potential is measured between the working electrode and the reference electrode for three electrical systems, and between the working electrode and the counter electrode for two electrical systems. The OCP of a single component electrode at equilibrium is defined by the Nernst equation. Nernst equation calculates reaction potentials from standard electrode potentials, temperature, activities of chemical species, and a few other parameters you can look up standard electrode potential online. If the reaction involves less common compounds, you can estimate the standard electrode potential by the division of Gibbs free energy of formation by the Faraday's constant and the number of electrons transferred during the reaction. An illustration of OCP measurement is shown on the right. The standard electrode potential for a two electron transfer of copper reduction half reaction is 0.34 volt and the standard electrical potential for a one electron transfer of silver reduction half reaction is 0.8 volt. Therefore, the difference between them gives us a 0.46 volt open circuit potential. When the electrode is not in equilibrium or contains more than one component, the mixed potential arises as two or more half reactions with different electron transfer kinetics occur on the electrode. In corrosions, mixed potential develops as the anodic and cathodic partial currents do not belong to the same couple. For example, the anodic partial current is due to metal dissolution, while the cathodic partial current is due to oxygen reduction. When the electrode contains multiple components and can reach equilibrium, the equilibrium potential of one component I may be expressed by the following modified Nernst equation. Here we assume the component Mi with the activity Ai is in contact with an electrolyte containing the ion MiZi with the activity Bi. An example of the equilibrium potential of a binary mixture with respect to the standard electrical potential of component 1 is shown on the right, with three curves representing different interaction conditions. The easiest way to measure open circuit potential is using high input impedance voltmeters. Potential stats become very handy when you want to record OCP for a certain period. Here we demonstrate the software part of the experimental setup. If you need help with a physical experimental setup, please refer to our video titled Reference Electrodes Fundamentals, Selection and Maintenance, or leave a comment below. I'm more familiar with Biologics EC Lab software, so I'm going to use it as the main example. In this software, you need to add a technique named Open Circuit Voltage. Then you will see a typical setup page that looks like this. 
The duration of the measurement is set in RESTful TR, and you can set the target time resolution in DER and DTR. The former will record data when every certain millivolt is changed, and the later will record data every certain seconds. If you set up both, the software will record whichever criteria are met first. It has occurred to me that OCP measurement can be shorter than what I set up in the software. Most frequently, it occurs due to the default limit of a potential change of 1 mV per hour being reached after the system reaches equilibrium. In some other cases, if the OCP is out of the set range of potential, the program will also stop. In other potential state software, the setup will be similar but likely with different terminologies. For example, in Pine Researchers Aftermath software, the duration of measurement is set in the electrolysis period, and the number of intervals controls the time resolution according to this equation. I hope this video helps you learn something new about open circuit potential. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. The main references in this video have listed here and in the description section. The video in our eCam channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, share, and like our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.